Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about a discovery of a pretty interesting supernova, or more specifically, a star that created the supernova, which doesn't actually add up. Which also naturally creates a new mystery that the scientists don't really know how to answer now, but it also gives me an opportunity to just generally talk about how our detection of supernova has dramatically improved in the last few decades. So first of all, when it comes to detecting supernova, we generally expect at least two supernova per year in the Milky Way galaxy. But because most of them are generally hidden behind various types of gas clouds, or even behind the thick bulge of the galaxy itself, we unfortunately do not get to see them. And the closest supernova to occur next to us in the last few decades was of course the one in the galaxy known as Large Magellanic Cloud, the galaxy we've discussed many times before the famous supernova known as SN1987A, the incredibly beautiful supernova that you see right here. Now this is something we've also discussed in the past, but unfortunately for the scientists, this so far was the closest that they got to investigate in detail. And very recently they've also finally discovered what seems to be the signs of the neutron star located right in the middle of the supernova. But even though in the last decade or so, a lot of different distant supernova have been discovered and identified pretty quickly by using some of the modern techniques, the vast majority of these beautiful supernova were always in really faraway distances and faraway galaxies. For example, this one right here is from the Pinwheel Galaxy, roughly around 21 million light years away from us. And because of this, it's generally been really difficult for the scientists to try to identify what sort of a star created them, mostly because we would have to be pretty lucky for a telescope such as Hubble, for example, to watch that particular region right before the star explodes in order for us to identify where the star came from and what kind of a star it was as well. And so generally the scientists only get to see the end result, not really the progenitor of the supernova itself, the star that exploded. And even though we know that stars like Betelgeuse are definitely going to create a supernova one day, none of this is going to be anytime soon. In case of Betelgeuse, for example, it's expected to occur maybe in about a million years from now. And so trying to discover a progenitor of a supernova has always been very challenging, but nevertheless, very intriguing as well. And so very interestingly, the team behind this paper right here that you see was able to quite recently identify a star that created a pretty famous supernova approximately two years ago, a supernova known as 2019 YVR. And by using some of the images from the Hubble telescope, and by looking at the galaxy where this happened, known as NGC 4666, approximately 46 million light years away from us, they were definitively able to identify what seems to have been the progenitor star of the supernova, the star that's now missing obviously, which only suggests that this was indeed the star that exploded. And all of this was only possible because two and a half years prior to the supernova, the Hubble was actually observing this galaxy in a lot of detail, allowing the scientists to zoom in and to actually find where the supernova happened. With the supernova visible right here, and the original star sort of visible in this image right here. All of this as always you can find in the description below. And although I guess this is pretty exciting that they were able to discover a star, the more exciting part here is that things don't actually add up, meaning that the actual star that they saw and the supernova that they detected do not match theory almost at all. So first of all, the star that they discovered that was there approximately three years ago is in some sense very similar to Betelgeuse. It's what we would call a red giant. So it's maybe about half the size of Betelgeuse and because of these temperatures and because of the size, it's sort of implied that the star itself very likely contained really large amounts of hydrogen gas surrounding the core. Now, when these stars explode, they usually explode creating what's known as the type 2 supernova, or supernova that usually contain a lot of hydrogen representing the explosions of these really large stars. And so theoretically, that's exactly what should have been seen. But the thing is, by observing the supernova for so long, the scientists have established that this was a much stranger type of a supernova known as type 1b. And generally, type 1 supernova do not have any hydrogen in them, while also lacking some of the other elements such as silicon. And generally speaking, type 1b and type 1c supernova are referred to as the stripped core collapse supernova, or basically the core itself becomes stripped of the outer shell and then collapses, exploding, creating the supernova itself. And so because of this, the hydrogen shell that usually surrounds the core is not expected to be anywhere. It should not have been there at all. And instead, what the scientists were expecting to see is basically the core. It should have been an extremely hot, blue, compact star, 
With a temperature of about 50,000 degrees or about 10 times as high as the one that they saw, and much much smaller in size, maybe about 50 times the size of the sun maximum. Or just to help you visualize all of this, they expected a star like this, but instead saw something much more giant and also a lot cooler in temperature. And so it's not entirely clear what actually happened to this hydrogen envelope in approximately two and a half years between the Hubble observation and the explosion of the supernova itself. Because it's pretty clear that when the star exploded, it did no longer have any hydrogen in it. It only contained the materials that signify that it was just the core exploding. The hydrogen disappeared. And so right now the scientists behind this paper, and I guess a lot of other scientists, are going to be trying to figure out where all of this hydrogen went or how to explain these observations. Now one potential explanation is once again maybe the star Betelgeuse. Maybe just like Betelgeuse, right before it went supernova, it ended up expelling pretty much all of the hydrogen outside, with only the core remaining. But how it was able to do so so quickly in only a couple of years is of course a question nobody can answer right now. The other explanation here involves some sort of a partner, a partner that was not visible. This partner, as it orbited the larger star, might have started stripping a lot of the hydrogen from the outer shell and did so really efficiently and really quickly. And because of this, by the time that the core collapse happened and by the time that the star, the larger star exploded, all of the hydrogen was already expelled and was probably just floating around, not being a part of the supernova at all. And so to try to confirm this idea or this hypothesis, the scientists now are hoping to be able to use Hubble telescope once again and try to discover the remnant object somewhere in that particular vicinity, the partner that could have stripped the larger object of its hydrogen shell. But either way, trying to figure out exactly what happened in this location approximately a couple of years ago is still going to be really exciting for a lot of these scientists, simply because it's a bit of a mystery and no one right now knows how to answer it. And also because this is one of those rare occasions where we finally got to find the progenitor star of the supernova that was later detected. Because this is such a rare occurrence, a lot of scientists are going to be talking about this and studying this for many years to come. But I guess for now, that's all we know. You can, as always, check out all of the relevant links and data in the description below. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you still haven't. Share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences. And maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful. I'll see you tomorrow. And as always, bye-bye.